In this video, we're going to talk about the structure that we're going to use for persuasive speaking. It's really important that you realize that the, in, the structure we use for the informative is Gonsville. We're not using that anymore. What we're using for persuasive is the Monroe's Motivative Sequence. I did give you a worksheet, worksheet that is with your persuasive speech assignment uh, so that you can put your speech together using that worksheet. So you're not turning in that worksheet, it's just a worksheet, just like when you do your taxes, you have a worksheet, you don't send it in with your ta taxes, it's just a worksheet. And then you'll still have to do your regular typed outline and works cited. So I need to tell you that first. I wanna start off with a video first. It's one that I found that uh, I think is pretty inspirational and hopefully it'll get your persuasive juices flowing. So here you go. Will you fight? No! We will run! And we will lift! Shame on you! This could be the greatest night of our lives. But you're gonna let it be the worst. And I guarantee a week won't go by in your life you won't regret walking out letting them get the best of it. Well, I'm not going home. We've got too far! And I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause. The day may come! And the courage of man fails, but it is not this day. The line must be drawn here, yeah. this far, no farther. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. You're going to work harder than you've ever worked before. But that's fine, we'll just get tough and win it. A person gets his teeth and shows real determination. Failure is not an option. That's how it is done. Believe me when I say we can break this army here. And win just one for the get But I say to you, what every warrior has known since the beginning of time, You've got to get mad! I mean plumb mad dog me. If you would be free men, then you will fight to fulfill that promise! They just cut out their living guts one inch at a time. And they will know what we can do! <gasps> Let no man forget how menacing we are. We are lions! And like a big bear, man! This is your time! Seize the day, never surrender! Victory or death! Bitch! Bishop! Who's with me? Come! Come, Come! Alright, let's fly! And gentlemen in England, no, bitch! So no! My name is the Lord! But I tell them that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our independence day! So hopefully that video got your persuasive juices flowing and you're ready and passionate to do public speaking. And uh, like I said before, this is all different. Uh, we're doing Monroe's Motivative Sequence for the persuasive. Uh, the informative structure is gone. There's going to be some similarities, uh, but it's really important that you follow this structure for the persuasive speech so you can get all your points on your final speech. This is your final. We don't have a test in this class. And so you want to treat this speech as your final because I'm treating it as your final. So that's really important that, uh, that you focus on the structure, of course, your topic and the delivery of the speech. So first of all, uh, we're, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Monroe's Motivative Sequence. All right, so Monroe is a psychologist and he studied how people are persuaded. And a lot of his work has gone into a lot of the commercials that you've watched in print and on TV for years. And so um, he's a really good source to go to for persuasive speaking. So he starts off his structure with A which stands for attention. Now, Monroe knows that the best way to start your speech 
is to gain attention. So he goes for the jugular and says, hey, we're gonna call it the attention step. So of course, that's the first thing you want to do is gain attention. So I want you to think about how people gained attention in their informatives. Maybe they asked a question or they told a joke and that got the audience's attention and gave, gave you instant feedback from the audience. But for persuasion, you're going to use a little more strategy. I love persuasive because I think it's uh, more challenging and it's a little more fun to put together because we're using a lot of psychological uh, theories so we can get people to do what we want them to do. Kind of like ma manipulation, but for good, not for bad. So first of all, in the attention getter, you want to use some uh, devices that Monroe says works really well for persuasive speaking. So the first thing we want to talk about is pathos. That is appeal to emotions. So you want to make us feel something, whether it's sad, angry, nervous, whatever you can make us feel. So I'm going to show you a clip and I want to ask you how you feel after this clip. Come on, buddy. You and me, we were made for love. A lifetime is not long enough to show you what you mean to me. So Budweiser does it again. How did that make you feel? Sad? Maybe nervous that you didn't know if he was going to come home or not? That definitely, hopefully, if you have a heart, that made you feel something. And that was a perfect uh, video clip that you could use in your speeches. Because remember, you, you can only use clips that are only a minute long. And so that was like 35 seconds. So perfect for any kind of speech and so you can use clips like that as well uh, one of my students last semester you he was talking about texting and driving and he showed us a video and it actually made you feel like you were in the car and everybody was texting and driving and getting on social media and a car slams into us and it actually felt like we were being slammed in by this car. It was amazing. And everybody actually went back in their seat. They felt that feeling. So that's what you wanna do. You want to make us feel something because, it, because persuasive is so different from informative. You want us to do something as a result of your speech. We're doing problem solution. And so that's why a lot of times you gave me topics and informative and I said, well, that's too persuasive. You can leave that for persuasive. Now's the time that you can use those topics. So you want to have us feel something so that we are invested in your topic. And of course, you're not going to announce your topic because we didn't do that in informative. You're definitely not doing that in persuasive. You have to gain our attention. So I'm gonna grab my pen here. All right, the second thing we're going to use is ethos. And that is appeal to credibility. Or ethics. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna wait on that one. I I'm gonna talk about logos first. The next one is logos. Which is, surprise, logic. All right, so uh, while pathos is good, it's very effective, you can go overboard with it. How many of you change the channel 
when you hear the song arms of the angels is it because you don't like these animals that they're trying to save no it's because they go overboard okay and so we listen to that and we say oh this is just too pathetic it's too sad i can't deal with it so you don't want to go too overboard on the emotions you want to add logos which is logic and that's where you uh, bring in statistics to uh, to back up the emotions and so like for example if you're doing a speech on drunk driving because that's what the the video clip was about you might say right after that every 15 minutes someone is killed by a drunk driver so there's your your statistics so you do want both you can't you can't go overboard on either one and the last one is ethos and the reason i'm leaving this for the last one is because i think this is the one that we don't really see in our society very much sadly anymore think about persuasive speakers in history now this is where you would answer me but you're not here so i'll tell you <laughs> um, so probably what comes to mind first is maybe martin luther king um, al malcolm x uh, maybe john f kennedy you know all these people were very good persuasive speakers but there's somebody else in history who was very persuasive and his name was hitler now did he persuade for the good absolutely not was he an ethical speaker no way okay so what i'm showing you now is that persuasion can be used for very bad things and unfortunately if you think about our politicians right now you expect them to lie right because that's what they do most of them all right so my job as a public speaker teacher is to tell you to be an ethical speaker and that's very important the end does not justify the means it's very tempting to lie in persuasion because you want something done you know hitler wanted something done and he got it done but it was a horrible tragedy right so you don't want to succumb to that of course i have stories i've been here for 30 years of course i have stories i started here in 1990. yep some of you were not even born yet but uh, when I came here, I was the coach of the speech team and I had a student on my squad. And if you think about 1990, think about a disease that we were finding out about in the 80s and 90s that was killing people, thousands of people. Yep, you're right, AIDS. My student on the speech team had AIDS and died from AIDS while um while he was on our team so it hits me very very closely and back then we had aids we did not even know about hiv so you had aids you died period so i had a student come to me and say i want to do a speech on safe sex so i said sure that's a great topic especially in this climate that would be a really good topic for you to do so in his attention getter, he tells a story about how he met this woman, they fell in love, they moved in together, and one day she came home and tested positive for AIDS and that he needed to get tested. So he also tested positive for AIDS. So we're in the audience thinking that this guy is dying, right? There were, there were females in the audience that, were, that had tears in their eyes I almost gave, got up and gave him a hug after his speech because I thought he was dying. No. He sits down after his speech and he says, oh, by the way, I don't have AIDS. I don't even have a girlfriend, figures. The whole thing was a lie. Now, how do you think that audience felt? Yes, betrayed pissed yep so they were not happy so my point of bringing this story up is that 
you can tell a story that's not true, but for gosh sake, tell us that it's not true. That's like one of you coming up here and saying, I have stage four lung cancer. We're gonna feel for you, right? And then you sit down and go, oh, JK, I don't. You're gonna turn your audience against you and you're not gonna get them to follow your speech anymore, okay? So, um, so it's really important to be an ethical speaker. Another short story I have is that I was on an a interview committee for a communication adjunct teacher. And so he's doing his interview and everything. And then at the end of his interview, he goes, I'd like to show you a video that I made that I show in my classes. Guess what the video was? The one I showed you right before the, I started this lecture. So he said, and that was so silly because I mean, here I have the, the video and I know he's not Matthew Blinkley or whatever, whoever was at the end of that video. He lied about, having, about making this video. So of course I told the interview committee, he's lying. <laughs> so he was not an ethical speaker. All right, so all of that you want to do in your attention getter. The second thing you want to do is relate the problem to the audience. Well, I don't drink and drive. Why should I care? I never drink and drive. So I don't care about this topic. Well, you need to care because you could be on the other side. You could be the person that's killed. You could be the person that, uh, who has a mother or a, or a daughter or a father. You know, we'll, nobody can escape this problem. So that's what you want to do. You want to relate it to us and tell us that it's our problem and that we need to care about it. So you're gonna relate the problem to the audience. And I'm gonna get back to the whole problem thing. And then the third one is of course, establish the significance of the problem. Okay, so there's another strategy we're using here and it's called the balance theory. And so basically this is a long drawn out uh, theory in psychology. And it says that your audience comes in and they're balanced. Nothing's really wrong. They just come in for class, it's not a big deal. And what you're doing in this balance theory is you're throwing your audience off balance. So you're gonna make us sad. You're gonna tell us that this problem is ours and you're gonna tell us that it's a big problem. So basically the problem relating to the audience is narrowing it to your audience and the establishing the significance is broadening it to society. And so you're gonna throw us off balance. So there should be all problem, no, mention of solution. Hopefully you can read that because it's going this way, but uh, yeah. So there should be no mention of the solution in your first part of your speech. And there's still another part that's the first part of the speech. So um, what would you say if I said, Today I'm gonna to tell you not to drink and drive. What would you say? Oh, here we go again. I've heard this a million times, I don't wanna hear this. But if I start with the, with the clip of the guy almost not coming home and leaving his poor dog by himself, telling you that, hey, this could happen to you, this could happen to your family. If you're still drinking and driving, you can kill somebody. You know, telling us that it's our problem and then t giving us statistics on how big this problem still is then you're gonna throw us off balance. So that's the first part of this balance theory. All right, so the second part is still part of that throwing the audience off balance. So, should I just go over here? Okay, so the second step is need. 
Monroe calls it need because he says that if people think that their needs are not being met, they're more apt to follow the solution. And so uh, that's why he calls it the need. But it's basically the problem step. You're still talking about problems. So this is really the body of your speech. So you're going to tell us what the problem is. Again, how it affects us. Stories. Statistics, etc., and cite your sources. Look familiar? It's the body of your informative speech, basically. So it's the same. So this is all going to be the same. Again, you want to be all problems still here. All right, and so all of this is throwing us off balance, right? So this, there's this horrible problem and it affects me and it's really bad and it's, it's widespread. What am I gonna do? Ta-da, C. <laughs> all right, so if you have a need and it's been, it's been met, it's called satisfaction. But, I, but of course, we all call it solution. So this is where you bring your audience back into balance. So you have thrown us off balance with your A and B, and then you bring us back into balance with satisfaction. All right, so this is where you tell us what the solution is. and how we can participate in the solution. All right, so you want to give us, uh, in the solution, it needs to be easy for the audience to participate in the solution. So if you want us to register to vote, Give us the sheets so that we can fill it out. Give us the website that we can go on. Make it easy for us to uh, solve the problem. And it needs to be practical. You can't say we need world peace and everybody holds hands and sings kumbaya. We're going to have world peace. That's not going to happen. It's not practical. So pretty much banning everything is not going to work. We banned smoking on this campus. And I think people smoke more now that we have the ban. So you kind of want to stay away from those. And then how we can participate in the solution. You give us the steps. A couple of semesters ago, I had a student. She was a uh, foster kid. And she uh, gave a speech because she's part of CASA, which is a volunteer uh, association that helps foster kids. She was a foster kid, but she got adopted. But I don't know if you know this, but when you turn 18 as a foster kid, you just get thrown out in the world. Uh, you don't stay at that family anymore. You're an adult. And so they need things. They need um, toiletries, you know, things like that. So she came to class on Tuesday and gave her speech. She gave us a, like a lunch bag. And she said, I want you to fill this lunch bag with toiletries so that we can put them in their stockings at their Christmas party. And we all went home. How many people do you think did that? 99% of the class did it. I was so proud of them. So she actually solved a problem. She did something with her speech. Uh, so, um, and then you don't wanna leave it up to chance, so you want to give them visualization. I call it guilt trip. I'm not gonna write it all out because you have it in your, uh, in your notes, so I'm just gonna tell you because it's really long to write out. This is where you tell us what will happen if we do participate in the solution, and then what will happen if we don't participate in the solution. So you don't leave it up for chance. You tell us what will happen. If we don't stop driving drunk, more people are gonna die. 
But if you stop driving drunk and you tell everybody you know to stop, then we will stop those deaths. So it's just a little tiny example. And the very last thing is called to action. And that's where you reiterate your solution or you hearken back to your attention getter. So you have your bookend, just like an informative. Uh, remember that's still important as well. So this is the structure that we're gonna be using. We're gonna do a structure exercise to help you uh, play around with it and learn it while you're doing it in a group. And of course, I said you have the worksheet to help you out.